The English term enlightenment is the Western translation of the abstract noun bodhi, Sanskrit, bodhi pali, bodhi, the knowledge or wisdom, or awakened intellect, of a Buddha. The verbal root budh means, to awaken, and its literal meaning is closer to, awakening. Although its most common usage is in the context of Buddhism, the term buddhi is also used in other Indian philosophies and traditions. The term, enlightenment, was popularized in the Western world through the 19th century translations of Max Muller. It has the Western connotation of a sudden insight into a transcendental truth or reality. The term is also being used to translate several other Buddhist terms and concepts, which are used to denote insight, prajna, kensho and satori, knowledge, vidya, the blowing out, nirvana of disturbing emotions and desires and the subsequent freedom or release, vimutti, and the attainment of Buddhahood, as exemplified by Gautama Buddha. What exactly constituted the Buddha's awakening is unknown. It may probably have involved the knowledge that liberation was attained by the combination of mindfulness and dhyana, applied to the understanding of the arising and ceasing of craving. The relation between dhyana and insight is a core problem in the study of Buddhism, and is one of the fundamentals of Buddhist practice. In the Western world the concept of spiritual enlightenment has taken on a romantic meaning. It has become synonymous with self-realization and the true self and false self, being regarded as a substantial essence being covered over by social conditioning. Etymology Bodhi, Sanskrit Bodhi, awakening, perfect knowledge, Perfect knowledge or wisdom by which a man becomes a Buddha, Buddha or Jina, Jina, Arahant. Victorious. Quote, quote. Victor. The illuminated or enlightened intellect of a Buddha or Jina. It is an abstract noun, formed from the verbal root asterisk budh, Sanskrit Buddha, to awaken, to know. To wake, wake up, be awake. To recover consciousness after a swoon. To observe, heed, attend to. It corresponds to the verbs bujati (Pali) and bodati (become or be aware of, perceive, learn, know, understand, awake), or budyate (Sanskrit). The feminine Sanskrit noun of asterisk budh is buddhi, buddhi, prescience, intuition, perception, point of view. Topic translation. Robert S. Cohen notes that the majority of English books on Buddhism use the term enlightenment to translate the term bodhi. The root budh, from which both bodhi and Buddha are derived, means to wake up or to recover consciousness. Cohen notes that bodhi is not the result of an illumination, but of a path of realization, or coming to understanding. The term enlightenment is event oriented, whereas the term awakening is process oriented. The Western use of the term, enlighten, has Christian roots, as in Calvin's, it is God alone who enlightens our minds to perceive his truths. Early 19th century Bodhi was translated as, intelligence. The term, enlighten, was first being used in 1835, in an English translation of a French article, while the first recorded use of the term enlightenment is credited by the Oxford English Dictionary to the Journal of the Asiatic Society of Bengal February, 1836. In 1857 the Times used the term, the enlightened, for the Buddha in a short article, which was reprinted the following year by Max Muller. Thereafter, the use of the term subsided, but reappeared with the publication of Max Muller's Chips from a German workshop, which included a reprint from the Times article. The book was translated in 1969 into German, using the term, Der Erleuchtet. Max Muller was an essentialist, who believed in a natural religion, and saw religion as an inherent capacity of human beings. Enlightenment was a means to capture natural religious truths, as distinguished from mere mythology. By the mid 1870s, it had become commonplace to call the Buddha enlightened, and by the end of the 1880s, the terms enlightened and enlightenment dominated the English literature. <laughs> <laughs> Related terms Topic Insight
Topic: <inaudible> Bodhi. Bodhi, Sanskrit, Pali, from the verbal root bud, to awaken, to understand, means literally to have woken up and understood. According to Johannes Bronckhorst, Tilman Vetter, and K. R. Norman, Bodhi was at first not specified. K. R. Norman It is not at all clear what gaining Bodhi means. We are accustomed to the translation, enlightenment, for Bodhi, but this is misleading. It is not clear what the Buddha was awakened to, or at what particular point the awakening came. According to Norman, Bodhi may basically have meant the knowledge that Nibbana was attained, due to the practice of dhyana. Originally only, prajna may have been mentioned, and Tilman Vetter even concludes that originally dhyana itself was deemed liberating, with the stilling of pleasure of pain in the fourth jhana, not the gaining of some perfect wisdom or insight. Gombrich also argues that the emphasis on insight is a later development. In Theravada Buddhism, Bodhi refers to the realization of the four stages of enlightenment and becoming an arahant. In Theravada Buddhism, Bodhi is equal to supreme insight, and the realization of the Four Noble Truths, which leads to deliverance. According to Nyanataloka, through Bodhi one awakens from the slumber or stupor inflicted upon the mind by the defilements kilesa, q, v, and comprehends the Four Noble Truths saka, q, v. This equation of Bodhi with the Four Noble Truths is a later development, in response to developments within Indian religious thought, where liberating insight was deemed essential for liberation. The Four Noble Truths as the liberating insight of the Buddha eventually were superseded by Pratichasamutpada, the twelvefold chain of causation, and still later by Anatta, the emptiness of the self. In Mahayana Buddhism, Bodhi is equal to prajna, insight into the Buddha nature, sunyata, and tathata. This is equal to the realization of the non duality of absolute and relative. Prajna <laughs> In Theravada Buddhism Panna Pali means understanding, wisdom, insight. Insight is equivalent to vipassana, insight into the three marks of existence, namely anicca, dukkha and anatta. Insight leads to the four stages of enlightenment and nirvana. In Mahayana Buddhism prajna Sanskrit means insight or wisdom and entails insight into sunyata. The attainment of this insight is often seen as the attainment of Enlightenment. Topic: <inaudible> Kensho and Satori. Kensho and Satori are Japanese terms used in Zen traditions. Kensho means seeing into one's true nature. Ken means seeing. Sho means nature, essence. See Q Buddha nature. Satori Japanese is often used interchangeably with Kensho, but refers to the experience of Kensho. The Rinzai tradition sees Kensho as essential to the attainment of Buddhahood, but considers further practice essential to attain Buddhahood. East Asian Chinese Buddhism emphasizes insight into Buddha nature. This term is derived from Indian Tathagata Garbha thought, the womb of the thus gone, the Buddha, the inherent potential of every sentient being to become a Buddha. This idea was integrated with the Yogacara idea of the Alaya Vijnana, and further developed in Chinese Buddhism, which integrated Indian Buddhism with native Chinese thought. Buddha nature came to mean both the potential of awakening and the whole of reality, a dynamic interpenetration of absolute and relative. In this awakening it is realized that observer and observed are not distinct entities, but mutually co-dependent. Knowledge The term vidya is being used in contrast to avidya, ignorance or the lack of knowledge, which binds us to samsara. The Mahasachaka Sutta describes the three knowledges which the Buddha attained Insight into his past lives Insight into the workings of karma and reincarnation Insight into the Four Noble Truths According to Bronckhorst, the first two knowledges are later additions, while insight into the Four Truths represents a later development, in response to concurring religious traditions, in which, "...liberating insight," came to be stressed over the practice of dhyana. <laughs> Freedom Vimutti, also called moksha, means, "...freedom." release 
deliverance. Sometimes a distinction is being made between sito vimutti, liberation of the mind, and panna vimutti, liberation by understanding. The Buddhist tradition recognizes two kinds of sito vimutti, one temporarily and one permanent, the last being equivalent to panna vimutti. Yogacara uses the term asraya paravirti, revolution of the basis. A sudden revulsion, turning, or re-turning of the alaya vijnana back into its original state of purity. The mind returns to its original condition of non-attachment, non-discrimination and non-duality. <inaudible> Nirvana Nirvana is the «blowing out» of disturbing emotions, which is the same as liberation. The usage of the term «enlightenment» to translate «nirvana» was popularized in the 19th century, due, in part, to the efforts of Max Müller, who used the term consistently in his translations. <inaudible> Buddha's awakening Buddhahood <inaudible> 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 Three types of Buddha are recognized Arhat Pali, Arahant, those who reach nirvana by following the teachings of the Buddha. Sometimes the term Sravakabuddha Pali, Savakabuddha is used to designate this kind of awakened person Pratyekabuddhas Pali, Pachekabuddha, those who reach nirvana through self-realization, without the aid of spiritual guides and teachers, but don't teach the Dharma. Samyaksambuddha Pali, Sama Sambuddha, often simply referred to as Buddha, one who has reached nirvana by his own efforts and wisdom and teaches it skillfully to others. Siddhartha Gautama, known as the Buddha, is said to have achieved full awakening, known as Samyaksambodhi Sanskrit, Pali, Samasambodhi, perfect Buddhahood, or Anatara Samyaksambodhi, highest perfect awakening. The term Buddha has acquired somewhat different meanings in the various Buddhist traditions. An equivalent term for Buddha is Tathagata, the thus gone. The way to Buddhahood is somewhat differently understood in the various Buddhist traditions. Topic: The awakening of the Buddha. Topic: Canonical accounts. In the Suttapitaka, the Buddhist canon is preserved in the Theravada tradition. A couple of texts can be found in which the Buddha's attainment of liberation forms part of the narrative. The Aryapariyasana Sutta Majjhima Nikaya 26 describes how the Buddha was dissatisfied with the teachings of Alara Kalama and Yudhika Ramaputta, wandered further through Magadhan country, and then found an agreeable piece of ground, which served for striving. The sutra then only says that he attained nibbana. In the Vanipatha Sutta, Majjhima Nikaya 17, the Buddha describes life in the jungle and the attainment of awakening. The Mahasachaka Sutta, Majjhima Nikaya 36, describes his ascetic practices, which he abandoned. Thereafter, he remembered a spontaneous state of jhana and set out for jhana practice. Both sutras narrate how, after destroying the disturbances of the mind and attaining concentration of the mind, he attained three knowledges, vidya. Insight into his past lives Insight into the workings of karma and reincarnation Insight into the Four Noble Truths Insight into the Four Noble Truths is here called awakening. The monk has attained the unattained supreme security from bondage. Awakening is also described as synonymous with nirvana, the extinction of the passions whereby suffering is ended and no more rebirths take place. The insight arises that this liberation is certain. Knowledge arose in me, and insight, my freedom is certain, this is my last birth, now there is no rebirth. Critical assessment Schmidthausen notes that the mention of the Four Noble Truths is constituting, "...liberating insight." which is attained after mastering the rupa jhanas, is a later addition to texts such as Majjhima Nikaya 36. Bronckhorst notices that the accounts which include the Four Noble Truths had a completely different conception of the process of liberation than the one which includes the Four Dhyanas and the destruction of the intoxicants. 
It calls in question the reliability of these accounts, and the relation between dhyana and insight, which is a core problem in the study of early Buddhism. Originally the term prajna may have been used, which came to be replaced by the four truths in those texts where "...liberating insight," was preceded by the four jhanas. Bronckhorst also notices that the conception of what exactly this "...liberating insight," was developed throughout time. Whereas originally it may not have been specified, later on the four truths served as such, to be superseded by pratityasamutpada, and still later, in the Hinayana schools, by the doctrine of the non-existence of a substantial self or person. And Schmidhausen notices that still other descriptions of this "...liberating insight," exist in the Buddhist canon that the five skandhas are impermanent, disagreeable, and neither the self nor belonging to oneself. The contemplation of the arising and disappearance of the five skandhas. The realization of the skandhas as empty and without any pith or substance an example of this substitution, and its consequences, is Majjhima Nikaya 36–42–43, which gives an account of the awakening of the Buddha. <laughs> Understanding of Bodhi and Buddhahood in Buddhism The term Bodhi acquired a variety of meanings and connotations during the development of Buddhist thoughts in the various schools. Early Buddhism In early Buddhism, bodhi carried a meaning synonymous to nirvana, using only some different metaphors to describe the insight, which implied the extinction of loba greed, dosa hate, and moha delusion. Topic: <laughs> Theravada. In Theravada Buddhism, bodhi and nirvana carry the same meaning, that of being freed from greed, hate, and delusion. In Theravada Buddhism, bodhi refers to the realization of the four stages of enlightenment and becoming an arahant. In Theravada Buddhism, bodhi is equal to supreme insight, the realization of the four noble truths, which leads to deliverance. Reaching full awakening is equivalent in meaning to reaching nirvana. Attaining nirvana is the ultimate goal of Theravada and other sravaka traditions. It involves the abandonment of the ten fetters and the cessation of dukkha or suffering. Full awakening is reached in four stages. According to Nyanataloka, through bodhi, one awakens from the slumber or stupor inflicted upon the mind by the defilements kilesa, q, v, and comprehends the four noble truths sakka, q, v. Since the 1980s, Western Theravada-oriented teachers have started to question the primacy of insight. According to Thanissaro Bhikkhu, jhana and vipassana insight form an integrated practice. Polak and Arbel, following scholars like Vetter and Bronckhorst, argue that right effort c, q, the four right efforts sense restraint, preventing the arising of unwholesome states, and the generation of wholesome states, mindfulness, and dhyana form an integrated practice, in which dhyana is the actualization of insight, leading to an awakened awareness which is non-reactive and lucid. Mahayana. <laughs> <laughs> In Mahayana thought, bodhi is the realization of the inseparability of samsara and nirvana, and the unity of subject and object. It is similar to prajna, to realizing the Buddha nature, realizing sunyata and realizing suchness. In time, the Buddha's awakening came to be understood as an immediate full awakening and liberation, instead of the insight into and certainty about the way to follow to reach enlightenment. However, in some Zen traditions this perfection came to be relativized again, according to one contemporary Zen master, Shakyamuni Buddha and Bodhidharma are still practicing. Mahayana discerns three forms of awakened beings Arahat liberation for oneself, Bodhisattva liberation for living beings, Full Buddhahood. Within the various Mahayana schools exist various further explanations and interpretations. In Mahayana Buddhism the bodhisattva is the ideal. The ultimate goal is not only of one's own liberation in Buddhahood, but the liberation of all living beings. But Mahayana Buddhism also developed a cosmology with a wide range of Buddhas and bodhisattvas, who assist humans on their way to liberation. Nichiren Buddhism regards Buddhahood as a state of perfect freedom, in which one is awakened to the eternal and ultimate truth that is the reality of all things. 
This supreme state of life is characterized by boundless wisdom and infinite compassion. The Lotus Sutra reveals that Buddhahood is a potential in the lives of all beings. <laughs> Buddha nature In the Tathagatagarbha and Buddha nature doctrines Bodhi becomes equivalent to the universal, natural and pure state of the mind. Bodhi is the final goal of a bodhisattva's career. Bodhi is pure universal and immediate knowledge, which extends over all time, all universes, all beings and elements, conditioned and unconditioned. It is absolute and identical with reality and thus it is Tathata. Bodhi is immaculate and non-conceptual, and it, being not an outer object, cannot be understood by discursive thought. It has neither beginning, nor middle nor end and it is indivisible. It is non-dual The only possible way to comprehend it is through samadhi by the yogin. According to these doctrines Bodhi is always there within one's mind, but requires the defilements to be removed. This vision is expounded in texts such as the Shurangama Sutra and the Uttaratantra. In Shingon Buddhism, the state of bodhi is also seen as naturally inherent in the mind. It is the mind's natural and pure state, where no distinction is being made between a perceiving subject and perceived objects. This is also the understanding of bodhi found in Yogacara Buddhism. To achieve this vision of non-duality, it is necessary to recognize one's own mind. It means that you are to know the inherent natural state of the mind by eliminating the split into a perceiving subject and perceived objects which normally occurs in the world and is wrongly thought to be real. This also corresponds to the Yogacara definition. That emptiness is the absence of this imaginary split. <laughs> Harmonization of the various terms and meanings During the development of Mahayana Buddhism the various strands of thought on Bodhi were continuously being elaborated. Attempts were made to harmonize the various terms. The Buddhist commentator Buddhaguya treats various terms as synonyms For example, he defines emptiness as suchness and says that suchness is the intrinsic nature of the mind which is enlightenment Moreover, he frequently uses the terms suchness and suchness awareness interchangeably. But since awareness is non-dual, suchness awareness is not so much the awareness of suchness, but the awareness which is suchness. In other words, the term suchness awareness is functionally equivalent to enlightenment. Finally, it must not be forgotten that this suchness awareness or perfect enlightenment is Mahavarokana the primal Buddha, uncreated and forever existent. In other words, the mind in its intrinsic nature is Mahavarokana, whom one becomes, or vice versa, when one is perfectly enlightened. Topic: <laughs> Western understanding of enlightenment. In the Western world, the concept of enlightenment has taken on a romantic meaning. It has become synonymous with self-realization and the true self, being regarded as a substantial essence being covered over by social conditioning. Enlightenment as outclaring The use of the Western word enlightenment is based on the supposed resemblance of bodhi with outclaring, the independent use of reason to gain insight into the true nature of our world. In fact there are more resemblances with Romanticism than with the Enlightenment, the emphasis on feeling, on intuitive insight, on a true essence beyond the world of appearances. Awakening The equivalent term, "'awakening' has also been used in a Christian context, namely the Great Awakenings, several periods of religious revival in American religious history. Historians and theologians identify three or four waves of increased religious enthusiasm occurring between the early 18th century and the late 19th century. Each of these, "...great awakenings," was characterized by widespread revivals led by evangelical Protestant ministers, a sharp increase of interest in religion, a profound sense of conviction and redemption on the part of those affected, an increase in evangelical church membership, and the formation of new religious movements and denominations. Topic: 
Enlightenment and experience A common reference in Western culture is the notion of «enlightenment experience». This notion can be traced back to William James, who used the term «religious experience» in his book, The Varieties of Religious Experience. Wayne Proudfoot traces the roots of the notion of «religious experience» further back to the German theologian Friedrich Schleiermacher who argued that religion is based on a feeling of the infinite. Schleiermacher used the notion of «religious experience» to defend religion against the growing scientific and secular critique. It was popularized by the Transcendentalists, and exported to Asia via missionaries. Transcendentalism developed as a reaction against 18th-century rationalism, John Locke's philosophy of sensualism, and the predestinationism of New England Calvinism. It is fundamentally a variety of diverse sources such as Hindu texts like the Vedas, the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita, various religions, and German idealism. It was adopted by many scholars of religion, of which William James was the most influential. The notion of experience has been criticized. Robert Scharf points out that experience is a typical Western term, which has found its way into Asian religiosity via Western influences. The notion of experience introduces a false notion of duality between «experiencer» and «experienced», whereas the essence of Kensho is the realization of the «non-duality» of observer and observed. Pure experience does not exist, all experience is mediated by intellectual and cognitive activity. The specific teachings and practices of a specific tradition may even determine what «experience» someone has, which means that this «experience» is not the proof of the teaching, but a result of the teaching. A pure consciousness without concepts, reached by "...cleaning the doors of perception," as per romantic poet William Blake, would, according to Moore, be an overwhelming chaos of sensory input without coherence. <inaudible> <inaudible> Bodhi Day Sakamuni's Buddhahood is celebrated on Bodhi Day. In Sri Lanka and Japan different days are used for this celebration. According to the Theravada tradition in Sri Lanka, Sakamuni reached Buddhahood at the full moon in May. This is celebrated at Wisak Poya, the full moon in May, as Sambuddhatva Jayanti also known as Sambuddha Jayanti. .According to the Zen tradition, the Buddha reached his decisive insight on 8 December. This is celebrated in Zen monasteries with a very intensive eight-day session of Rohatsu. See also Buddhist philosophy Buddhism and psychology Illuminationism Enlightenment spiritual Hongaku Subitism Wisdom Notes